people don't realize other people will be so much more willing to work with you if you're vulnerable. Like mm. totally sure. open floor. One of the first manufacturer we went to that was like a huge, massive <laughs> manufacturer. I literally was straight up like, I don't know what I'm doing. Please. I was like, please take a sec. I was like, I swear I'll be a good customer. I swear I'll be driven. <laughs> I will be so big. I will be here every day if I have to be. But like, help me. I literally have no idea. Like my head from my ass. I don't know. Like I was like, literally teach me, and I will be there, and I will study, and I will do it. And they were, in that way, they were full transparency, totally willing to teach me. This is Start of the Storefront the podcast where we inspire entrepreneurship through truth. Today's guests are Leah O'Malley and Tori Robinson, lifelong friends and co-founders of the clothing brand Boys Lie. It's probably safe to assume that a fair share of us have experienced heartbreak. And in Leah and Tori's case, they turned their heartbreak into a mantra. That mantra would become the eventual inspiration to launch something bigger than the two of them, to connect with the world of women who had also gone through a bad breakup. They decided on a makeup line, the problem was that the makeup line didn't connect as they had intended. But the two women were far from finished, and they pivoted to manufacturing streetwear. With this new venture, they finally found their audience and connected in a big way. So listen in as we cover everything from how they've had their own trouble with paparazzi, while they'll anonymously answer support emails from time to time, and why you should never go into business with your best friend. Now, back to the episode. All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Tori and Leah from Boys Lie. Thanks Hello. for joining. Hi. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. us. For, people who, <laughs> for people who don't know, what, what is Boys Lie? So Boys Lie is our brand. We actually launched it back in November 2018. And when we first started, it was a cosmetic company. We launched with a bunch of different makeup, a lot of SKUs. But what we realized really quickly is that no one really knew us yet, and people weren't going to buy a product of makeup, especially if they have never heard of the brand or would be able to try it on in store. Well, it's not only that, but I can look at her red nail polish, right? I don't need to be like, hey, what brand nail polish are you wearing? I go to CVS and I buy that brand. So that was another reason why not only were we from Radnor, Pennsylvania, grew up together and known each other forever, but the it's East Coasters. Like, yeah. Nice. <laughs> we came here with no influence, no like title or anything and tried to make some noise in the market. And that's really not like wasn't what worked with us. Yeah. And why the name? Why the name Boys Lie? So well. <laughs> <laughs> how do we start? We've uh, known each other for 16 years. So that's a uh, when did you guys meet? How old are you when you met? Oh my God. It's so like 11, 10 or 11. Oh, super so young. Like, right, okay. like yeah. middle like school, yeah. grade school time. Okay. We grew up okay. five minutes away from each other. Like wow. not even a block away. And we both went to different schools, but we would always be in the same social setting. And we never really became close, close until college when both of our boyfriends who were best friends were dating. At and the time. No longer with us. Uh, well, still with us. <laughs> They're dead now. Yeah. <laughs> to us, yes. <laughs> but we ended up breaking up with them and just became best friends. And from there, we just got to see some really rocky relationships. Some um, crazy stuff. That both of us had gone through. And basically, Boys Lie became kind of like a mantra, inside joke, word that we would use in group chats or getting ready. Um, and... It wasn't ever meant like boys lie, like fuck boys. I mean, sometimes it did, of course, but sure. it really There's meant anger there. like have a sense of self worth and know your worth. And, you know, it's not worth your time if this person's going to really mess around with you in this type of way. And also, again, like it could be a job. Like I was going to quit my job. I used to work at Yelp in New York. It could be a loss of a best friend, Some, somebody like hurt you in some different way. Heartbreak and I think is that like on all levels. It's universal. Of, yeah, it doesn't need to be with a boy specifically. It can really be in any term of a relationship, whether that's a best friend, boyfriend. Yeah. So boys like kind of stuck. We would say it all the time. And it, we were really drunk one night in New York and she was about to move out to California and she was leaving me and I was really sad and we were kind of crying. And we were like, boys lie is such an interesting name. We should do something. With so it. I was like, whatever, for shits and giggles, let's just trademark, trademark it. it. And so... I go out to San Diego. I worked in private label manufacturing for cosmetics. That's why we started to white label Boys Lie. And basically, I think the other part of the branding aspect of things is we had two merch pieces. And by merch, I mean like they were really true merch pieces where it really represented the brand and what it meant and everything kind of around it. And it at really, the time we launched the makeup. At the same time that we launched the makeup. And we only had two SKUs of two hoodie 
pieces. What kind of makeup were you making? Like, what was the thing? Oh my god, what we had like eyeshadow, highlighter. blushes, highlighter. so everything. Yeah, like full, everything full under the sun. And it was. Okay. I think the consumer themselves were just like overwhelmed. They also didn't know what to pick, and I guess the makeup really wiped away the inessential of our business. Like, it taught us how to fail. It taught us what business to go into and it really pivoted us to drive all this fire and failure and i kind of like feel like we surrendered in some type of way and we moved forward with the clothing and it became like something bad happened and we would just laugh about it and again reiterate like boys lie boys lie boys was lie. it obvious though like how long did you guys stay in the makeup lane oh only a year yeah. okay and so you, it, it wasn't right selling then. it was selling slowly what was the, the two pr pieces of merch were selling out and it wasn't until we got reach outs from delilah bell and mingley simmons and keep in mind again we're from rounder pennsylvania so coming out to la being surrounded mm -hmm. by all these people is kind of wild we so. had like noah cyrus reach out in our we're dms and out. she's like Hey, I purchased these hoodies under a fake name. I just wanted to let you know. Can you also send, send this sold yeah. one, like sold out one? And we were both like, "Oh my god!" So these <laughs> like, people wanted the clothing, and then what do you once think they, they connected to? Like, what was the thing heartbreak. that heartbreak? I think everyone. It's like therapy. You guys basically everyone out there has a heartbreak story, whether it be again with a significant other or a friend or and a job. The clothing, I feel like, with that type of manner, it comes with an experience. So it's almost like wearing your heart on your sleeve, or like wearing a sense of like armor, like you're showing somebody. Or showing the world you went through an experience and now you're involved with a community of people who are really learning how to heal and like willing to educate each other and talk with each other and we have people who like follow us that literally purchase for other people that are following us that they've never connected with before and they're like i really needed to get this person a gift she's going through something and yeah it's really cool to see that our brand DNA was really strong, and I think everyone could connect to it in some way. I want to dig deep on just one thing. So we have a lot of companies come on the podcast or even like personally that reach out for advice. And what they end up doing, some of them get caught in this rut where they're making a product for everything. So it's almost like, oh, they like this, so they're going to make this thing. And then, oh, my girlfriend likes this, so they, they end up making a sweatshirt and then a T-shirt and then a golf bag. And then it's like none of this makes any sense, but they're creating a brand, right? But the hard part is like they don't know what direction to go in. Do they go apparel? Do they go sports? And so for you guys, when you started with makeup, I'm sure you guys are selling the merch. You're seeing that as a signal. But at the same time, it's like a part of you also wants to keep trying and make it successful. And so at what point are you like, this is it? This is the thing. So we had a really pivotal moment and Leah literally thought someone died. But we were in San Diego and our parenting company was like, look, like, you guys have two months left to figure it out or this is just done. We like, thought we no were going to be out of a job. So at that point, we were like, everything's up in the air. The universe will take care of it. Maybe we're trying too hard. And all this press comes out. Gigi Hadid walks out in a goodbye boys lie set right after she broke up with Tyler Cameron. And it was known to the public that, that two of them had broken up. So... I'm a huge Gigi that's fan. Awesome. I yeah. literally, she screams that's so I'm like loud. seeing this from one of like the Hadid outfit accounts sure. and I'm like, ah. she screams so loud. I literally thought something horrible happened. And then I'm like, what, what? And she comes down at like, where she's at the top of the steps. I'm, I'm like almost sobbing. Her I'm face like, is bright red. Gigi I'm like, Hadid's in our stuff. And it, it you was, can't script something like that yeah. any better. It was crazy. And just like, it, it, she also stepped out at the most perfect time too. Cause again, we were failing and it just created so much buzz around this one product. But then it also brought people to our page and they saw the other items that we made and it became it made people become we call it customers. the viral factor yeah. so it's like it went so viral this type of experience that I mean even Gigi was willing to represent and become a fan of and it was so organic too like it was so wholesome and so we were like oh my god and then it was like those two months ended and we couldn't produce fast yeah. enough like yeah. there is nothing fast enough that we could possibly do and it was I mean a really wild ride in between that the two totally. of us I mean, we were packing out orders without poly bags on our clothing. Like, we didn't know. We I were went packing to, out all yeah. the orders ourselves and driving them back and forth all day long to USPS. They thought in between, we were crazy. also working a sales job for this. We knew everybody company. here oh by name, so we'd be like, "We're here," and they bring us out of bin, and we roll in all the orders, and we go back to the office, pack out more, bring them back, and we're just like, "How is this happening?" And our stuff is like obviously poly bagged and clean. Yeah, everything's and better. Everything's good. Everything's great. No, yeah, but um, Very professional. neither of us even had like a degree or education that I mean I went to Harvard of the West Arizona State University so like that's naturally good. there you go I did a lot more of college than school I guess in a weird Same. way that's what that's, everyone from Arizona yeah. does yeah you did the right thing <laughs> and she went to Boulder um and she was a communications major but we never had like a sole focus on clothing like we would always dress alike we would always like we run crazy. around New York and 
our friends would be like, the circus is here when we would show up. <laughs> We'd be matching head to toe every yeah. single time we went out. <laughs> but it was never like we really like thought that this was going to happen. Yeah. I it's th- still mind-blowing every day. Yeah, and as we go by day, it's like to kind of determine what category we go into, the business itself just calls for it. Like your audience, if they're really engaged with you and you're really a digital native brand, they're willing to tell you like, we really want this. So like now we're creating a home line. We sold out of our vases. We're doing ashtrays, blankets, like That's all awesome. these new French things. French press. And does it say boys lay on it? Oh, it has our little emblem. It? I'll show you a picture. It has our little emblem that you like press down, make your own coffee out of. We'll give them to you for your coffee shop. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah That's like, pretty amazing. It's insane. And it's kind of like, at least with the background we had in the white label for manufacturing, for cosmetics that really taught us like, okay, how do we take this and kind of this education and transition it into manufacturing for clothing and now everything else under the sun. One of the things that we hear all the time from companies who get an unexpected bump Mm -hmm. is that they're unprepared to fulfill those orders. Like it's excitement when it first comes in because it's like, oh my God, we're finally hitting, all of these orders are coming in, but then it's like, crap, now we have to fulfill all of them. Well, what's so crazy is when we first started and we were doing that, we were doing made to order and our customers were willing to wait. So they waited two months to three months for one hoodie. With no, literally no complaints. They would they would pay for it and they would wait and they, they loved it. So- I think the other part of selling something good too and wholesome is like, again, we were the only two in this. So for customer service emails, we were like truly like, look, in full transparency, <laughs> I'm an ASU graduate. I'm one year out of school. We just decided to do this. Just give me please like, bear with us. Yeah, please bear with me at this time. Trust me, it's gonna get to you. I want it to you more than you want it like itself. That's and awesome. just please like forgive me in the meantime. And I think also that transparency of customer service is so important because the personal interaction with were the- people shocked? Were they like, oh my god? I, they you. were so like empathetic, yeah. honestly, yeah. and they were like, wow, this makes the brand even cooler. And I think a lot of brands kind of miss out on that opportunity to connect with them on a personal level. I had a fashion company. We created this fake alias named Max. And so Max was basically me or my buddy mm-hmm. Matthew. And we would just Max would take care of you like Max. If your order was back ordered or he would expedite your shipping randomly or Thanks, if you had Max. a problem, Max would just solve it. If you needed to talk to us, Max was like the go between, but it was just me and Matthew. Me <laughs> I and love that buddy. because you didn't want to necessarily like get maybe I get targeted that too, get, or, or get targeted or blamed for something, but maybe Max can handle it. Also and makes people the company love seem Max. bigger than it was. Oh yes. yeah, we would yeah. Yeah. also yeah. sometimes write back and be like, "Hey, I'm an intern. It's my first day here. Let me double check on this and get back to you." Like yeah, sometimes I still handle the wholesale email, and they're like, "Who am I speaking with?" I'm like, "Maggie." <laughs> <laughs> but awesome. we did. We in the beginning phases of things, we we're like fully, fully transparent. And what's cool is we. Since the makeup like stopped, we haven't paid anybody to post or anything like that. So all these celebrities who have been wearing our brand, it's truly been and organic. I hate, yeah, they just I hate connect the word with organic, it. but it's truly that's the one thing wholesome. I see over and over again. Like a lot of brands that come on here, I think a lot of people think they have to go to business school or have to say like, oh, I have to figure this out to do this thing, or I have to give myself permission, which usually comes in the form of like a degree in order to be successful. And the brands that we've talked to that have come on the podcast, they're really just chasing expression. Like their brand is a representation of something so deep to them Mm -hmm. and people connect. The crazy thing is other people connect to it. Right. And it's insane. Yeah. I I totally get that. I also just think people are naive about the world and how it recognizes you. Because for instance, okay, you have 100 followers on Instagram. Right now, we would look at that and be like, oh, that's minuscule, right? But like, imagine 100 people in a room following what you're doing. That's a lot of that's people. That's a lot of people, a lot yeah. of eyes on And you. a lot of yeah. 100 people having family. How much family does 100 people have? Like, yeah. and that connects, the world is really abundant. People, you just need to find the right group of people who believe in the same things you do. And I think you don't really need a formal education for that, but you do need a lot of spirit and a lot of will where it's like, you can be pushed down seven times, but you have to get up eight. Like, that's just the way that it is. And we had people who really didn't believe in us who are friends for a long time, who like when we started, they literally like would make jokes, laugh, laugh, like post on their own socials. Do you still talk to them? Yeah. (laughs) Well, now they're the biggest fans of our brand. Oh, they switched. Yeah, we we converted them. (laughs) At least they came around. Now they ask us for free stuff all the time. Yeah, which is even worse. You can buy your discount code. And you remind them. 
Yeah, yeah we do. And it's really cool. And it's really exciting. I like to proving see that. people wrong. Yeah. yeah, no, it definitely feels the tank. And then yeah. the best part of it, like I've talked about this a lot on the podcast is once you're right, it's addicting. Right. And so oh. now, now you're like, how, how much how? more can I go? Yeah. What's mm-hmm. the next crazy? Like what's crazy now? Yeah. yeah. And, and you just willing. keep you like, you love the people that hate because it drives Fuels you to. A, yeah. Yeah. We love that. Fuels I love when tank. people tell me I can't do something. Cause I'm like, okay, Watch now I'm going to do it. Like now I'm going to extra do I'm it. I'm trying to do this art walk on a real estate development project. And I have like, it like went viral on Instagram, all That's these amazing. haters, all these people. And I'm like, it's a dumping site right now. It's <laughs> like, literally what a trash is there, site. What is there to yeah. hate? And they're all just going through it. And some of the artist community, like they're fighting them. They're going back and forth. And it's crazy. And I'm yeah. like, I'm just trying to get rid of a dumping site. I don't know why there's any opposition to this. But apparently, because I called it an art walk, I'm appropriating that term. Mm. Oh. And they refer to me as like some rich white kid from San Francisco, which is like, oh, I made it. I made it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> But it's just also, crazy. I think no matter what, like 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 you're saying, everyone's always gonna have an opinion, no matter what. You can't control that, and that's like why the world goes round. But I think what's cool for a brand, or if you're starting a brand, like if you find that one thing that you know relates to so many other people out there, it's gonna give people a reason to buy. I also just thinking like, so many people come up with ideas, but how many people actually pursue them? Right. So I feel like for us, it's like, okay, like we could have easily not trademarked Boys Live. We were drunk on. St. Patrick's Day in a fire station in New York City running around like lunatics crying and it was kind of like the next day I was like oh my god really hung over but I was also like let's just see what we can do with this like it doesn't hurt and that was so exciting because we were like all right what could this be and when you have almost like nothing yet it's like you have nothing to lose you have literally no risk like it's just like fuck it let's just you're in the bonus yeah Yeah. but you just have to be willing to keep going and just not be scared yeah and every loss that you're gonna take you're gonna have one win that's gonna be like just your whole world and that's where i think the high comes from because I think as an entrepreneur, you're going to lose so much more than you win, but your wins are so worth it. Yeah. Big and like milestone like that. It's like, yeah. fuck yeah. I, everything I put in, I'm getting out of this. <laughs> what's your greatest loss? Like what's the one thing you guys think about when it comes to the worst time? Oh my God. We've had so I don't even, many I don't problems. even think there's, <laughs> a lot. there's just a lot that we've dealt with. And I think too, like we've you, had, you come out here and you trust these people who say that they can give you the world and they can, they know this person, they know that person. Meanwhile, they don't know this, these people and they're also lying to your face, but it's just this persona like, that they put LA on. is like, Cardi B is my best friend, right? Like, like you met and her you're once like, at oh, a party. you are? Like, your best friends, can you text her right now yeah. then? Like, yeah. if that's your whole ordeal, and I mean, 99.9% of the people like can't, but from the East Coast, it's, it means a lot when you put someone forward and you introduce someone and you're like, hey, I'd love to connect you. And I think that's a different mentality than what it is here. You meet a lot of people who are like jacks of all trades with masters of none out here. They're like, I do this, I do that, but they don't. It's almost like this thing they say to build themselves up. Yeah. But it ends up hurting people along the way. Yeah, there's a big like fake it till you make it. And sometimes they're just faking it a little too hard. Yes. You know, it's It's like they don't know Cardi B, but they know a cousin who knows a brother who knows that. Ran and those past to be one time. stick with you too. Completely. Like they, they oh really like, you know, make you think and, and influence how you interact with the next person down the line who actually might know Cardi B. Yeah. But because you've had these interactions before, it really puts a bad taste in your mouth. But it becomes so interesting because a lot of times you want to put that wall up, but at the end of the day, you still have to trust your intuition and you can't put it up fully because there's still going to be that one person who is who they say they are. I think that's, that's our so true. biggest like, the benefit of the doubt. experience yeah. Yeah. is just trusting or... <laughs> intuition Mm. but um in general with business and meeting people i think business isn't about like being a harvard graduate like that's just cool you did that but you don't know what it's like to fail then in real life and you don't know how to get yourself back up and like that's the real challenge in life bitches at harvard you heard (laughs) (laughs) no it's just kind of like it's a false reality like school's an experience it's great for me it taught me how to meet people and put myself out there and it really made me more of a social person than i it's already great was great social experience yeah. amazing don't yeah. remember anything you. that i learned yeah, in yeah, school yeah. i just think it's linear like the thing with school is it's linear it's like here's a test here's the material study it take the exam do well if you do that enough times you'll go into a top school if you do that enough times you'll work at a top firm right but it's not like they're not teaching you to go left they're not teaching you to go into entrepreneurship yeah, or like, like how to even your create passion. a solution when something yeah. fails like bring me another option or how can right. i like regroup and reset and like redo this again 
the right way. And I think that's the education that like out of school, people really need to start learning if they want to start a new business. Do you guys have any siblings? Yes. Two. Two oh. sisters are the same. I was like, wait, do they, do you have them? Do you have like, have you given them the bug or that do they work for you guys? Have they no, interned? No, not at all. Um, My sister actually, I think she got the bug a little bit from what we do. She just, she's into wholesale sales. Okay. My brother's actually at Michigan right now studying. He doesn't give oh, a nice. shit. <laughs> <laughs> My younger sister, she's super like save the planet. Didn't even like believe when we were doing Boys Live. She's like, this is so stupid. She's like, I can't <laughs> believe you're doing this. And now she's like, can you send me a beanie? Like, can I get a hoodie? And I'm like, for sure, Chase. But no, my older sister also, she's super into photography and food and that's her life. And for me, I'm like, at the end of the day, someone give me a cardboard box, I'm starving. Like, yeah. I don't <laughs> yeah. care. And I think we're just so different, my siblings. That's they, the best thing about siblings. It could be like super humbling. Mm -hmm. Like it reminds you that there's someone, nothing like you. But it also but, gives you- But related like, to you. Or at least for me and my siblings, it made us really competitive. And oh, I think wow. that that's also helped me. And I mean, Leah, I know you're very competitive. <laughs> I think I'm competitive with my sister. She is not very competitive with me. She actually <laughs> supports all of everything I do. And She's like the number one fan. <laughs> Shout out, Kara. I love you. Um, but also hilarious. my little brother, Luke, too, he'll text me during the day. And he's like, hey, I saw this on this website. That's so cool. And he walks around Michigan and sends me pictures of girls in the school wearing our stuff. And I'm like, oh, my God. Have he you guys ever thought about doing like campus reps with your family? We've do you guys do that? We've talked about doing a boys' eye tour where we'd, st where oh. we'd stop at like all the different campuses, like the biggest ones around the country yeah. Yeah. and like have like a wrapped boys live bus and just do trunk shows out of like we would dope. just definitely need more we'd employees need like three and more and hands months. and also like i do all the design work still so okay. like i would definitely need somebody like a head of design who, or yeah. something yeah like because going on tour and to colleges and yeah, i'm already maybe a bad a camper at, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, it's just a thought you know who knows yeah. if it'll ever come to life but we've, we've definitely talked about it did you guys feel a lot of pressure once, like, let's say that post Bella Hadid? Gigi. 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 So once she posted, did you all of a sudden go like, oh, my God, we have to design all this new stuff? I think it wasn't pressure. It was more so excitement. Like, that drove me to be like, okay, this person is willing to put this on their body. I'm not wrong here. Like, it just proved everything we were working towards. It was on the right track. So yeah. it drove me to be like, oh my God, we have to do so much more. Oh my God, we need more people. Or, oh my God, we need to quit our other job and <laughs> like, and get going. And we were still super small at the time too. So like we knew what we were launching with, like we have a drop structure where we drop every other month. So we knew what was coming out in the next two months. We still had inventory to sell. So once she stepped out and it, she, it, that set fully sold out. And it's still one of our, we call it evergreen products that we keep around because it's still one of the most popular crew next do you see that day. post uh coming back around is it cyclical like oh my god yeah so much okay. we're like tagged in it at least once every two months wow that photo and now we're like learning things that we didn't really understand before like paparazzi takes pictures of these people right yeah. without they them call knowing them. oh okay no without them knowing right okay. they take this picture we get tagged from like fan accounts being like, oh my God, Stella Maxwell has walked out in a boy's lie set. They tag us and I'm like, oh my God, this is sick. Let me post this on my story, right? Uh -huh. yeah. We've gotten in trouble now, like legally, because this paparazzi person will come after you for not fully. Oh, so he, owns, oh. he owns the picture. So we're like, okay, so you're you taking these permissions. pictures so, of celebrities without their knowledge and they're not saying to take the photo, but now you own that image of them and you're trying to charge us. But we yeah. have like fan accounts grand. posting that image. So yeah. like to track that all the way down for yeah, the resources is really impossible. hard. Yeah. Exactly. So, so now we can't repost pretty much anything unless we buy the image. Or um, yeah. Ask what do they want to charge you for One the image? One photographer was trying to charge us $150,000. I mean, they, they do. <laughs> swear to God. That's it. For one image. For Incredibly those who want to know, the Gigi Hadid insane. photo of her yeah. in the goodbye set, that was like two grand for us the to, photo? Yeah, mm -hmm. to keep, license, post on our story with all mm -hmm. credits and same with the grid post. And you have to credit the, the time, photographer? We had to do it. Yes. <laughs> we had to do it because it was like the one thing that we saw like that could help us get to the next it's level. It's like the NFT. Like, yeah. yeah. NFT. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't even understand that world, but. When you were first designing the products, was it more of seeing what was in style at the time or was it more of this is what i like this is my sense of style fashion and i'm going to design clothes based on Can that I start? yeah this is a best so, <laughs> this is a really good question well so tori and i both used to steal all of our ex-boyfriend's hoodies and sweatpants. classic so, i have so many missing hoodies from my dating days <laughs> probably never, season, guys, i'll never see them again it's so, like i still think about them just for the record i know exactly who took it like, and i'm bummed out yeah. but um so we knew we loved to wear oversized men's hoodies and so we were like let's be comfortable and 
we know that that makes us feel good and confident. So we're like, we should follow the step. I mean, when I go to, even if I like had to buy something from Urban or something like that, I only shop in the men's section, which yeah. is so weird. We wanted to create clothes for girls so they didn't have to do that, you know? So mm -hmm. like they were shop they were shopping men's street. That's actually really smart. And so now we're like, well, really there's smart. no place for girls to get it because they buy all the men's stuff. And you so just why feel comfortable. It? It's not something, again, it's not meant to show off your figure or anything like that. I mean, for some people, sure. Like if you feel that confident in it, that's amazing. But it was more so just to feel good in your own body. Like it's for comfort. Like I feel my best at a party and a matching sweatshirt, sweatpants set. I feel like I can like move and like dance and like walk around compared to wearing a tight top. And, and that's just me. That's personal. But that's where I feel the most I'm the confident. same way. They're like, I'll wear this to like a formal gathering. Yeah. Like, and people you know, will be like, yeah. what's wrong with you? And I'm like, no, I'm yeah. the one who has it right here. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. And the next I, time you go, other people will, will be wearing the same shirt. Totally. And actually, I, I basically associate with people only who dress like me now. Like as a real estate developer, it's tough because there's a bunch yeah. of suits. Like everyone's finance or suits. And so like I call it like the developer he, jacket. He used to, when he I have would to, be a blazer. And he would just only wear it for official meetings and he would call it his Or like developer grand jacket. openings. Yeah. And it's just but like oh the developer jacket. Yeah, there's no need for that. Because I've been at like city hall meetings where I'm basically just giving the laid land on a project and all the city council members will come up to me individually at some point and say, Hey man, like you, you really need to wear a suit to this. Like you're kind of Says being who? rude to us. Yeah. And I was like, Oh no, it's not personal, but yeah. they take it personally. Interesting. But it's not any it's And I'm like, this is nice clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's they're set in their ways. That's, that's it. Why. Yeah. They, they haven't, they that. haven't woken up to this new concept. Yeah. That's and so that's why I just wear the jacket, yeah. jeans, t-shirt, <laughs> I'm wearing this jacket, jacket for you guys. Yeah. But when we did design yeah. the hoodies, the first <laughs> two hoodies, one of them was like a denim -y color and it had this amazing poem on the back. Shout out Carson Patrick Bowie. We love him. It's still our best selling product and it's called the denim hoodie. That was like something that I felt I personally designed that was geared towards like me and like my trending aspects of things. And then we had this neon orange hoodie, which is very Leah. Loved it. And it says, like, what are you going to do without him um, on the front? And then on the back, it's a comic character on the phone, like, Pop chewing bubblegum, popping it, and saying whatever I want. So, so it was, it's also kind of two phases of heartbreak because you go through this one part where you're like, you know, I, I'm better than this. I'm out of here. And then you go through, well, now I'm just going to do whatever the heck I want. So yeah. fuck off. The, <laughs> the back of um, the denim is about love, being, loving someone unconditionally, but if they don't like measure up to your sense of self-worth moving on from them and still loving them the same way. So mm -hmm. it's still loving yourself like from a distance. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. We're in the process of creating merch for our podcast, but it's more of like just the hard hitting quotes that people have dropped oh, like on the cool. podcast. I love that. And I have no idea if it'll work, but like to me, it gives me an excuse to wear sweatshirts. And so <laughs> worst case scenario, everyone like will know their Christmas present in the family. Yeah. And, uh, but it, we're just going to try it out and see if our audience. Well, now they can hate on you in meetings because you're like, hey, I'm, I'm repping, I'm yeah. walking advertising my branding. Right now. Sorry. Yeah. 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 And we think it's like a powerful thing. Like we, something I always say is like, don't buy your home, buy your office. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, that's something I think the new American dream should be. Our office is my home. <laughs> Literally right now. <laughs> <laughs> or that. But it's just like more to get people to think differently about the norm. I see Leah more than I get to see my own family on the East Coast and vice versa. So it kind of, whatever you do and you're passionate about, you create a lifestyle around that. And it wholesomely becomes your everyday life. And it succeeds with you and it fails with you. And yeah. it might succeed even when you're personally failing, which is fantastic because at least it gives you a drive to do something in the morning. But I think that for Boys Lives specifically, we made sure it would be a lifestyle type of experience. And that's why it is really cool to have it as a home setting and you know when we do pop-ups or anything like that I want it to feel like you're like in a living room walking in and it's all boys lie themed. and it's great too because we do all of our photo shoots there we can have events there our team works out of there so it's just a multifunctional house that's a boys lie house yeah it's really cool yeah, like play but like way more appropriate yeah yeah, yeah yeah do you guys have any dream collabs either in the works or just that you hope to bucket off? list items I mean we I definitely do. Yeah. Right now, we're going to be collabing with um, someone who's pretty big, and it's really exciting, but it'll be in 2022. Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. It's Q1 of 2022, but I think for us, like stepping into this world, especially in LA, we really didn't realize what it is like to like work with a celebrity type person. And that's really changed my perspective on a lot of things. Also, we had a really good first experience. Well, I guess now second experience technically with the makeup but this is a really good experience working with somebody like that because this person is really driven and also extremely creative and so having someone who's who you're doing a collaboration with be able to 
provide like equally as many ideas and like care about what you're making because they also really care and love care about and love the brand and we're like it's cool to see someone that you're as as passionate as you are about the brand that you work with and collaborate with I think for me like it's been shell shocking a bit because for instance they want to host an event at the house right Mm -hmm. and they want to have some pretty big celebrities there and I'm like thinking to myself like oh my God, I need security. Oh my God, I need to make sure the food is right. Like what type of dietary, I mean, everyone in LA has some type of dietary restriction. So I'm like, I'm explaining to like my family being like, oh yeah, like so-and-so might be coming to the house. And my sisters are like, that's awesome. And I'm like, no, it's not so awesome. I am sweating, like thinking about all the things we have to organize. And it's a dream. It's for sure a dream, but it's so crazy how your perspective genuinely changes once it's like real. Yeah. There's well, a lot of baggage and humans. hoops to go through. Well, also, yeah. you don't really have time to think about, oh my, you don't really, it doesn't hate it you. It doesn't register even until when it, it happens. happens. Like, yeah. so even then, like on that day when it happens, maybe for a second it will hit us, but then it's on to the next thing that we need to take care of. So it's like We got constant. 30 under 30, and oh it was like I read it in the morning, and I was like, oh, wow, that's really cool. And I walked upstairs. Leah's hysterical. She's like, I'm like, Leah, we have a photo shoot. Get it together. I I was, <laughs> they were trying to do my makeup, and literally I was just crying my whole face off. I couldn't keep it together, which is weird because normally I don't. Yeah, why? Did you, why did you place um, so much value on that I, award? I don't even I think know. It's it because it was like such a, a big accomplishment. Like, we've been so down in the dirt, and, like, we've been told, like, you can't do this. You won't be able to do this. And just to have that there by this, like, by Forbes – like that to me was like we fucking did it, and like we we are worth it, and everything that we did was and all the meant shit people be. talked like literally yeah. it was just kind of like where we are. that's Fuck the you. best yeah that's the best type of revenge is like being just also, yourself and successful yeah. and it was kind of like for me I think I was like <laughs> holy Your gas shit. tanks are so full <laughs> yeah. I mean I was just like whoa it I'm couldn't... shocked you didn't react the same way I did because you're usually one that reacts that way and I'm usually the one that's a stone cold it bitch. like <laughs> couldn't even register in my brain like it took me at least a week and a half until after where I was like oh shit we really did get it and then that's when I was like I'm emotional and it's not like we need to be validated by anything at all but just to be recognized recognized like that was just a huge honor and it just it just kind of it, it made all of our hard work worth it which we already knew it was but it just kind of it showed everything we put in we got out yeah of it. I remember calling my dad I'm like dad You'll never believe us. I'm crying. Like, we made Forbes 30 under 30. He's like, wow, Leah, that's awesome. What is that? And I'm like, dad. <laughs> Humbling. Yeah. I just tried to do it the best Philly accent no, I could. No, I mean, but, it's amazing. Even yeah. when Gigi wore our stuff, I was like, dad, Gigi Hadid's in our stuff. He's like, okay. I was yeah. like, no, Gigi Hadid, you know who that is? And he's like, no. And I was just like. And then the people oh. at our headquarters were like, who's Jai Jai Hadid? And yeah. we're like, yes. guys, get with it. <laughs> Well, and then you guys took it a step further, right? You did a collaboration with Forbes yeah. afterwards, right? Yeah. yeah, and they've been an amazing team to work with. And what's really cool about Forbes that people really don't know is once you get the 30 under 30, they put you in a community of people who are in our age range who are going through the same issues, and you get to communicate them with them on a daily basis. It's and an amazing networking it's, opportunity. Yeah, the networking that goes on through that. I mean, they host events. We've hosted one at our house, mm-hmm. and – it's really cool how consistent they want to keep the community going. And whether that's with your class is what they call it for the year or with another class, it's really cool to see that. We've had a lot of the brands on here that have. Re- a couple, yeah, recently. Jimmy from uh, Super Coffee, Brevity, yeah. the Brevity Boys, the Backpack yep. Guys. Is it like a, like a like text they have thread, a, like a group thread? No, they have a huge no, Slack, Slack. Yeah. Okay. group. And then it, also they'll have like – They'll email you and be like, hey, we want to set up, I mean, during COVID, like a Zoom cocktail hour type thing where we can talk about things. And oh, my God. Speaking oh. of, the first time. Oh, my God. During this is so awful. 30, 30. So hold on. Wait, time out. Everyone was supposed to get like a bottle of really nice Macallan. Okay. They're, like shipped to them. Yeah. I, okay. Okay. So I guess so. When, we never got ours. Yeah. We, <laughs> hold on. It gets They forgot better. about us. So you basically go on a Zoom call and everyone kind of, they announce you and they're like, these are all the people who got it. And it's kind of like a celebratory award type of thing. But then they put when you Lee off into I, your group Yeah, when Lee and I people. went to go break off into the group of, like, the people who got art and style, they accidentally put us in entertainment and TV. Ah. So we're sitting there, I'm like, wait, you were on The Lion King. Are we in the right group? <laughs> and also, to make it even worse, is everyone was drinking this whiskey, and Tori and I were sitting there drinking White Claws. So, like, and we so look like, like hey, the guys. trashiest blonde girls. We're, like, so like, we're not actors or 
we're in the entertainment industry, but thank you for having us. But we also then became, we met Friends with everybody in the entertainment and TV group yeah. of Forbes. We didn't even like get just, to meet so many perfect. art and style It was so people. classic. Like that only would happen to us, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting there, we're like, wait, we're in the wrong room. Yeah. And I was like, do we say something? And she's like, no, 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 it's fine. It's, it's TV and entertainment. I'm like, let's stay in here. <laughs> but it was hilarious. Do you think any collaborations will come from that little mistake? I'm sure. Like, there's I definitely going to be opportunities in the future. I think it's cool because the collaborations that we have right now, they're actually people who have come to us because they also, again, love the brand, believe in the brand. And I think that that's really special because then it's, it makes the collaboration even better. And it's really cool to not only have that passion shared between the person, but it's cool that we're selecting from people when – like a year and a half ago, it would have been us reaching out being like, we're just for mm. Yeah, It's a very different makeup. It also like makes you feel like, again, like somewhat validated that these people are reaching out before you even reach out to them. And what's funny is um, we reached out to a couple people when we were first beginning oh, yeah. and they said no. And now they're reaching back out to us being like, hey, let's collab. It's like, yeah, do you not remember us? Yeah. <laughs> you turned us down a year and a half ago. But or the like answer to their DMs or just like go to DM message us and see like a DM from like 2018 and be like, oh, oh my God, I totally missed this. And I'm like, no, you just, you, yeah. you deleted that. And you're also <laughs> now DMing us for free clothes. Yeah. So, there's a great story about that with, between Justin Bieber and Billie Eilish where she DM'd him when she was like seven or something like that. <laughs> and of course, Justin Bieber's not reading all of his DMs. So we he wish didn't, he was. So like when yeah, she, he yeah. is a big believer. <laughs> it's a secret. Well, when she <laughs> became <laughs> famous and popular, he actually wrote to her and DM'd her like, hey, I'm really liking your music. Keep doing what you're doing. And when he was doing that, he saw that old DM from like, you know, five, six, seven years ago. And he was like, wait a second, what is this? That's and so she, funny. she said she was just so completely embarrassed because she had forgotten about it. Yeah. And also it's not who she, like, she wasn't that like, like uh, you die hard. Over the years. Yeah, like, you change Yeah, totally. You become like an actual adult. I should probably delete all my DMs to Justin Bieber in case I <laughs> yeah. have yeah, reset them, right? Just kidding. Like, just pretend to start a conversation. Yeah. Oh what do you guys view as the future of the brand? So it's Boys Lies Today. Maybe you guys get married one day. Maybe you have kids. Like how, how do you, how far do you take it? Does it change Forever. the brand at all? <laughs> no, so for us on our long-term goal, like in the five-year plan, what's amazing about LA is there's so many creative people. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just endless. And yeah. there's influencers with whatever they influence. Sometimes it's nothing. I don't really understand. But <laughs> there are so many content creators, so many creatives, so many designers, so many everything. But the reason why they fail is because they have no real laid out foundation of like accounting, legal, operations supply chain they like they don't have what to do it themselves or the concepts of like oh i actually need this they don't, they oh, don't know they need a team oh yeah exactly. i need a tax exempt form what's that again right, like right. and it's there's so much access right now for brands that i mean we've seen that we've really admired so ultimately i think our goal would be to house in those brands let the creatives run wild and be like go on like an lvmh essentially dior runs all the houses like we boys lie would be the dior and all the other houses would get to be other brands that are in our wheelhouse. They'd help them with production, photo shoot, no problem. Like uh, pattern need a maker. PR team, we got you. Yeah, like. photographer, no. Like so, I think that that could be really, really cool. And just um, having it all under one big roof, so it's kind of like a huge warehouse filled with like all these different outlets of rooms that do different things. You have your accounting team, you have your legal team, you have who can like help with any type of yeah. trademarking, um, and just to help be mentors to these people because we went through it too, and it's not easy, especially if you don't know if you don't know how to do something and you don't have the right people to ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, what so. would be the biggest obstacle in getting to that place? I think the biggest learning curve to that is proper supply chain and making sure we have that pillar of the foundation very, very strong. And just operationally, like having something perfected, like religiously with that's like really anchored for these brands to understand this is how you start and this is how you finish. Yeah. Just um, getting everything that we're doing right now, like down to a T perfect and knowing that we can actually end up supporting these people. Meanwhile, I say this in our operations person quit yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that though. It's a little, it's a little sore subject. It's interesting. So we had no bake cookie dough, which is like a cookie dough. I love that. I've okay. had it. So they came on the podcast and then Jimmy, who's the, he founded the company with his wife, he emailed me earlier this week just being like, hey, I want to create this thing for CPG brands in Nashville. And so basically the concept is we buy a massive warehouse. This warehouse has all the kitchens we need. It's also got a little like VC arm. And so there's funding in place for CPG companies. 
there's a daycare. Jimmy's a new father. Nice. And so he's like, we want the daycare. Yeah, we need a doggy daycare. Yeah, we need one at yeah, a new office. Yeah, same thing in like a gym, yeah. the whole thing. And it's he's awesome. basically like, and we want all these CPG brands to be part of this, like, not an incubator, but literally use the space, ship from the space. Well, that's where it becomes a lifestyle, right? It's almost right? like a WeWork for... Like, that's exactly what he wants, for like CPG. WeWork for, yeah, it's perfect. And I'm a developer, so he's like, how do we do this? And my background was like in tech and different yeah. companies. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh man, this is like amazing. If yeah. we can pull this it's off. Really so now we're, idea. but it sounds like kind of what you're saying too, yeah. where it's like, like you become you a house. You create a house. Essentially that's like yeah. a real house that has divisions of whatever facets. I mean, that are unique to us that mm -hmm. we feel strongly about and believe in. Yeah. With marketing, with legal, the yeah, whole exactly. thing. Everything. All the nine yards of everything. Yeah. Have you guys heard of Y Combinator? Have you heard of them? No, I don't it's think basically so. like a tech accelerator program. That same concept. It's three months. You go through this program, but they have Reddit, Airbnb came out of there. Right. I mean, you name it. All the yeah. all the major unicorns. But basically, what make what I love about their program is they have the legal team in house. They have the accounting team in house. They have the press that gets you an article and whatever tech yeah. publication you want, and they have the investors. And yeah. so it just made it. It makes you as a founder just focus on your business. Completely. And it's a lot less scary getting into it too when you know you have this team of people. Yeah. And you can ask all the dumb, you, know. you know, quote unquote dumb questions. Yeah. And like no one's there to judge you. They're like, yeah, no, this is normal. They and just it take just care of opens it. up your doors too to be able to like eventually, like hopefully the brands that we have, even though they're going to be a variety of ones that are like ours, they can collaborate with each other. And that's even cooler. Like you see that now with Tiffany and Supreme or what is it, Tiffany and I think it was or Timberland. We had know. Market, the founder of Market. Yeah, mm -hmm. Chinatown Market formerly. Oh, yeah. So Mike, and he's like the collab, like the king of collab. It's yeah. unbelievable the collaborations he's putting together. Yeah. And his like fingers on the pulse of like culture all the time. It's it was crazy. I met him it's, and I'm like, this guy is a special human being. Yeah. He reminds me of like a street artist. Yeah. Meets like complete rebel with happens to have a fashion company. But w one of the things I learned with Mike is he he was bullied in school, and me so what he so are we? Yeah. He tells this great story where he was bullied in school. And he made sweatshirts and put the bully's face on them oh and God. brought them to school and gave them to everybody except the bully. Wow. And then the bully wanted a sweatshirt because he felt left out. Interesting. So the bully punched somebody I else some balls to get to a sweatshirt and then Mike got expelled. Oh my God. And what I learned about Mike is he's really just focused on building community. And so mm -hmm. while he might have like a fashion brand that LeBron wears and all these A-listers, he doesn't care about any of that. Mm -hmm. He's just creating community. He wants you to know that you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. To us. Yeah, and it I mean, hits. That's, it like it touches. Yeah. You know? Well, that's a part of I think the lifestyle experience that you get. And what was I talking about today? With oh, we would create donations, right? And you could have a direct link to either donate to a foundation or you could buy a hoodie, and we would donate for you, right? So many more people bought the hoodie than directly donated. And for me, I kind of realized like, wow, that kind of makes people really, really selfish, right? They want some type of gratifying thing that they can receive for doing a good deed. Mm -hmm. And then I started to rethink it and I was like, actually the hoodie represents a good deed that they did and it right. has a community of people who also represent that type of, I don't know, foundation or believe in what you donated to and they're excited to wear it, like Tom's. Like they're like, oh, you wearing Tom's? I'm wearing Tom's too, we both donated to the same. Same community, yeah. yeah. And that's really cool because that puts an experience into the clothing. I think that's also why our brand does so well again is because it every single piece like means something to these people. Yeah. Actually, um, when we first started our Instagram at, as Boys Lie, we didn't have our product shot yet. We didn't have anything done, but we created a, basically a collage of not only quotes and graphics that represented what the brand was and what it was going to be, but also memes, like funny memes that related to heartbreak at the time. And we started building our following just from that. And they're like, what's boys like going to be? What's boys like? Like nobody be? really knew oh, that it was going to cool. be clothing. It was simply like a meme account, but basically built... that had a creative mood board attached to it. So if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll, you'll see, see like it. all these memes and these creative mood boards attached and you'll be like, wait, what? But we also through that built our demographic because the people who started following us related to the same things that we were going through. And so the followers that we are gaining, we also knew we were going to love what we were going to come out with. So it was a really interesting way. We didn't even, I think when we were doing it, we didn't even think of it like that until yeah. after we're like, look at what we just did and this is how it worked and this is why we built our following this way. But it was just, it's, it's cool because people gravitate towards what they relate to. Do you ever feel like it ties you to that heartbreak though forever? Can, can you, do you feel like you've no. been able to move beyond that? No, because now we're able to like laugh over stuff like that. I think that 
also it's cool because we built this together and I would never recommend going into business outside of our <laughs> people always ask us, like should I go into business with our best my best friend we're like no yeah. it's like it's a very hard. unique very relationship we have a very that we very special have, relationship. but it's I think what's made boys lie boys lies because of such the unique relationship yeah. we have where I feel like I could lean on her any time of the day that I needed whether that's in work or my personal life and I'm assuming vice versa, Jesus. Obviously. But, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just letting you finish. No, it's okay. <laughs> but um, I think that for me, it's like Boys Lie has always been like a foundation for me to heal through whatever. And what's great is I get to lean on my best friend to go through that healing process and go through being like, someone just told me we can't get a license to something. Let's go do it. Yeah. Like, and it drives you need us that to do it together. System. And honestly, like, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say like, it was always easy because like it, hasn't <laughs> it definitely been. wasn't right, the thing right. about us which is nuts is that like we've since we have known each other for so long we have a sister relationship as well so like I know I know the second I see her starting to get mad I think she knows the same with me I, I can read her I can tell by the way that face. she walks like simply walks in a room I can hear it and be like oh I know what mood she's in yeah <laughs> so like if you're able to read each other it's literally like sisters and then we could fight and then we're like wait did you see that that person died just in the picture and then we're like back <laughs> to normal again you know so you have to make sure that you are ever thinking about doing that you the end goal will always be the same same. we've never like brought in also fights into work like you go in and you're like this is our goal today we're gonna go through it we're gonna make it through today and then at the end of the day deal with our personal problem if it's still even there type of thing it's and communicating when something I think we had to learn how important communication was and like telling each other like hey, these are the things that really openly bother me. And you have to address it when it happens. Otherwise, it has this Festers. like... Yeah, and it has this build out of this shit. And it's not worth it. And then I think you get... We get, would get in our heads. I'm sure you did the yeah. same. And we're like, they're thinking this, but like probably we but neither of us was. And you like really come down on yourself too because you're just like, why would I do that? Or yeah. like, why are we fighting right yeah. now? And so like those were really big learning experiences for us in Milestones, the beginning. Honestly. And I think... This getting, also when we were failing too. Yeah, so, was, so getting over that hurdle while you're both working your ass off and failing was like, again, a very pivotal point to our business yeah. too. You learn a lot about yourself too. And I think the one thing you learn is like the little voice inside your head and how crazy that can go. And so Completely. even an assumption like, oh, she's walking like this and now your brain starts going... Is it, is oh, it me? what is the reason? And then you start building an idea that doesn't exist. 100%. People don't realize... Other people will be so much more willing to work with you if you're vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Like For totally sure. open floor. One of the first manufacturer we went to that was like a huge, massive <laughs> manufacturer. I literally was straight up like, I don't know what I'm doing. Please. I was like, please take a second. I was like, I swear I'll be a good customer. I swear <laughs> I'll be driven. We're I will be so big. I will be here every day if I have to be. But like, that's awesome. Help me. I literally have no idea. Like my head from my ass. <laughs> I don't know. Like I was like, literally teach me, and I will be there, and I will study, and I will do it. And they were in that way. They were full transparency, totally willing to teach me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For us, the podcast is like therapy. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> like like people say oh you have a podcast I'm like yeah but it's basically me inviting founders to a therapy session because we're all kind of go through going through like the same thing to some extent Commiserating yeah. on and the, so all every the time we're done with this I always feel like oh I'm ready now yeah. like it just feels like a cleanse it's no, like oh it's we're good definitely is I it's also it's, nice to relive it all right you relive like the highs the lows you talk about it and then yeah, in that there's mind such share a weird feeling. it's like it almost well it still is a nostalgia type of feeling just thinking back to like what we would go through and um, where we are now and like how much we've both changed. I mean, even like imagine this, we lived with each other for three and a half years. We, we had dogs together. Yeah, we had dogs together. <laughs> we've done everything together. We almost, oh my God, we almost accidentally signed ourselves up as sex offenders in a no, registration that's, line let me together. Just, let me how do you just, almost let's, do that? Let's yeah, backtrack. That's, let's that's backtrack. an interesting story. My car, like, that's my how car, crazy. Like, no, my car was stolen <laughs> and we were waiting in the wrong part of the San Diego police station. We were waiting in the sex offender registration line. The police officer could see us from behind the screen. There's a line for that. Yeah, no, he comes oh out my and he's God. like, are you Imagine the right too? line? Yeah, like, <laughs> this standing is the sex there? offender registration line. And then all the sex offenders they look at each other laughing and start at laughing. Us. And we're like, oh my that's God. That's That's such a so dark like ex- bit of comedy right there. Yeah, we experienced <laughs> a lot of like a humility movie. together type of thing. Like it, we've oh, been humbled God. together. Yeah. Wait, there, there can't be just a placard up above. Well, no, like, obviously. Sex offenders yeah. not here. Yeah. But then no. he's like, follow the yellow lines back up to the main office and report your car missing there. And we're like, What's we, worse we walk is we were like, standing <laughs> there for like 15 to 20 minutes. Like, like, why is everyone looking at us weird? Yeah. Like, is everyone else's car stolen? Like, what's happening? And we're just so out of it because of everything we've been going through. We didn't even realize, like, the people and who they were. 
And we've had fights stores. too. Like in New York, we had to do desk sides for cosmetics where you sit next to all these editors and you show them this is the it's ultimate story. It's very stressful. Story. It's not only stressful, you're up at five in the morning, we were getting our makeup done because again, we were promoting our makeup brand and it's like you're being poked and prodded at and you just have to like get through your day, continuously do your pitch and pretend like everything's all good. At the end of our desk side meetings, Leah and I being that we were in New York back again, we were like, let's celebrate and let's get drunk and let's have a good time. We both get wasted, like yes. totally get in a drunk argument. Like I don't total, even remember what I, I was have about. no idea. Neither of <laughs> us. I just we were both going back and forth and back and forth, and we got a call. We ended up sleeping in separate places. Well, no, you were going Whoa. to. Go. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> but <Rewind>. we <laughs> <laughs> we wake up. I keep getting like missed stranger phone calls from my phone. I look at my voicemail, and it's like the San Diego Police Company saying um, our house was broken into. Our dog sitter had oh, woke up no. to a man jerking off over her face. And what? Yes. So what? like, true story. It went from like screaming. A lot argument. to be talked about on the Holy podcast. Crap. Annie's shaking her head no, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so from like screaming drunk argument to like 6 a.m. having to put on makeup, and I was like, I literally That's don't terrifying. give a fuck about what we argued about. Let's yeah. figure out uh, yeah. this person's yeah, situation. This is a much bigger like, problem. Yeah, like. But so those are just two instances that we went through, like on top of our business failing. So the craziest shit was happening to us at the same time of us being down in the dumps. Like the most insane thing you couldn't even make up. Imagine your business is failing and your car gets stolen, and you're just like. What do I do? I'm like, where's, like, I'm like, where's yeah. my car? I could have sworn I parked it out here last night. Oh my like, God. And we had Nest cameras so and it was so funny because I was driving into work and I'm like, Leah's calling me being like, I don't know where my car is. Maybe I like accidentally parked it somewhere. Did it get towed? Did it get towed? And I'm like looking and I see Leah with her like little dog <laughs> running down the street with the clicker like back was, and forth. I was pressing Meanwhile, the panic button on my car, the car trying to see if the alarm gone. would go off. Like, and then we finally rewinded <laughs> it and realized somebody stole it and it was just like, oh my God. It was just God. a lot. We're alive though. We're That's well. A lot. We're uh, fine. Yeah. yeah you guys the fact have experienced that we can laugh so much at such it. a young age. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But that's, I guess, the most important thing is, like, again, we work together, live together, sure. have been in some crazy situations, and the end goal has always been the same. The same. Thing. Yeah, as tough as those situations are, you have learned from them, you've grown right. from them, and you are now, you're more ad adept as people to handle whatever comes next. Yeah. Whatever yeah. the next big hurl is. Hopefully it's not someone breaking into your house <laughs> or, you know, getting into a, oh, okay. the Hopefully. sex offender line at, at the <laughs> police station. Together. Oh, my God. <laughs> We always say, like, oh, just add this to the chapter the of the book, chapter when, it, in our book when something bad happens. It sounds like a movie. You guys showed a movie. Honestly, or like seriously, a sitcom. We a sitcom would be amazing. Boys Lie as a title it. for a sitcom would work really well. This is really the Mayor well. of Easttown. This is the, <laughs> yeah. the Philly native. This yeah. is the story. <laughs> right. That would actually it. be, that's a good idea. Oh, Maybe God. one day when we have the time. Right. Have you guys raised capital for your business? No, it's it all, all privately bootstrapped? owned. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yourselves are the owners and... Was it still the makeup company or after you pivoted to clothing? It was still the makeup company. Basically, when we went to create our business, I pulled money out of my trust, but not like just being like, hey, I need X amount. Like it was literally like we had to create this business plan and go in front of this entire board and be like, hey, down line, 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 line. These are what our expenses are going to be like. So that also laid the foundation and blueprint to our business. And at the time, we were so naive. We were like, oh, this is going to work exactly to the blueprint. Like, <laughs> like yeah. this will be perfect. Stick Everything's to the blueprint. Yeah. It'll be and fine. thank God nothing worked the yeah. way that it was supposed to. But that's really how we started. And now it's just, I mean, we're three years and it's profitable. Yeah. Almost three years as of November. It'll be three years. That's so fun. Oh, it is November. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Happy anniversary. Wait, Congratulations. The, holy <laughs> shit. I think it's on the 8th or the 18th. Oh my god! We, we forgot our anniversary last year too. Why did so, we do that? <laughs> so by the time this episode comes out, it'll be three years. Three it's years. Yeah, the wow. eighth or the eighteenth. I can't remember. I think it's the eighteenth. Well, happy anniversary, guys! So it's Thank you. There. Thank Have you. Have some cider. Well, with design work right now, I'm supposed to be which. Uh, sorry, I'm here, but like finalizing <laughs> August of next year okay. that we're supposed to be pre-selling to February. wholesalers too. By February would be like the latest date to pre-sell. So what from, stores are you guys in? Right now we're in Revolve and Urban Outfitters. And we're then in just touch boutiques with, around the yeah, world. Yeah, we're in like 80 plus boutiques. But um, we're also in touch with a bunch of bigger majors that we're hoping to be in by the start of 2022. Anything else you guys want to tease and drop before we uh, or let, let people know where they can find you? You can find us at Boys Lie. Yeah. If you want to follow us personally, she's at Reptar. And Great I'm Instagram you, how did you handle, by the way. Handle? Yeah, yeah. I mean, amazing. how many people have contacted amazing. you asking to buy that? Do you know someone on Instagram? Yeah. I 
that you can no put us comment. in touch with. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just have been a huge Rugrats fan, and Reptar was always that fire breathing. And crazy you must gym. have been one of the first people on Instagram because I can imagine that yeah, handle. Yeah, she knows someone. No, Instagram. she knows. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You have to know. I know somebody. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anything. You know Regan? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Regan. We have a friend of ours who's a singer, and so she got at Regan. I really want at Leah so bad, but, but it's not taken. And so I asked her how she got it. Yeah. She's like, oh, I, I have a friend at Instagram. You need to know somebody. Who I was knows like, somebody, that's what's yeah. up. But yeah. All well, those inside connects. It's my uh, digital Reptar. persona. Well, congratulations on Reptar. <laughs> Thank you. We, we had, I had a bow tie company, and we put Reptar on a bow tie. Hell yeah. As that's a awesome. fun thing. I should be Reptar for Halloween next year. I know, you should. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't already. <laughs> I know, I really should have. <laughs> that is such a great handle, Reptar. Yeah. You could be Tommy Pickles. Nah. <laughs> or Chuck. I'm, I'm never going to get rid of mine because mine's my full name. Yeah, so, she's and I got, right. I had Keep my, it. I got Instagram like really early and I got Leah O'Malley. And so I'm like, if I ever get rid of that, I'll never get it Someone's again. Someone's going to take that right. for sure. Very popular last name. It's All right. So at Reptar, at Boys Lie. Or you can. And at Leah O'Malley. At Leo yeah. O'Malley. Or you can shop on boysliofficial.com. Mm-hmm. Go on Revolve. Any, also, anything also. coming up for the holidays that you want to. Yes. We're releasing a home goods line, which is super exciting. We're also releasing a very high luxury line which is going to be a new branch of our brand called peace of rain okay which is spelled like peace like oh cool peace. e-a-c and then rain is spelled um r-e-i-g-n ah. we're also coming out the basics line too so also keep an eye out for that oh and a jewelry line oh yeah there's a what lot else going are we on doing? y'all are busy <laughs> yeah we'll drop sneak peeks on our instagram before we um drop with each new line but i yes. love it yeah good stuff it was thanks really nice thank podcast, you for having guys. us yeah it was really this was fun. fantastic it was really thanks for the therapy session yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the therapy session i don't need to see my therapist tonight anymore 